Hello, everybody, and welcome to exercise three on page 68 of the workbook. And in this problem, they're asking us to find the volume of a solid region that's enclosed between two paraboloids. Okay, so um, in this problem, we're going to use a fact that, or an observation that we've made a couple of times already, and that is that if we want to find the volume using a triple integral, all we really need to do is to integrate dv. We don't need a function. Okay, and the reason for that is units. dv, remember, just represents, you, you can think of it conceptually as the volume of a very tiny cubic slice of our diagram. That already has units like cubic centimeters, and if you add up a bunch of cubic centimeter slices, you're just going to get the volume of the whole region. Okay, and the key to doing this is going to be finding the Finding the limits of integration, that's what they mean when they say set up, is to figure out what those limits are. All right, so we're going to have three integrals here. Okay, and we need to choose a direction of integration. I'm going to choose to go in the z direction first. If you're wondering why we make that choice, one reason is the fact that the two surfaces that they give us are solved for z. Okay, and generally when that's the case, it's going to be easiest to integrate in the z direction first. Okay, and then after that, um, let's just pick an order. Maybe we'll go dy dx. Okay, and it's up to us again to figure out what those limits are. Okay, and the key is having a picture. Okay, so I'm going to start with a picture of the two surfaces that were given, these two paraboloids. And... Um, z equals x squared plus y squared, we've already seen that a couple of times. It just looks like kind of an upward shaping, shaped ball. And turns out that z equals 8 minus x squared minus y squared, that's a parabola but turned upside down due to the minus signs that you see here. Okay, let me erase a little bit of the clutter here. Okay, so the minus x squared minus y squared tells us that we're talking about a parabola that's kind of turned upside down and shifted upward. And so these are two paraboloids that kind of just meet each other. Okay, so there's what our region would look like. And I'm going to just superimpose the axes here. Okay, x, y, and z. Okay, and then go ahead and label these two surfaces. So on the bottom is the upward-shaped paraboloid, z equals x squared plus y squared. And let's label them over here. And this is 8 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, now just to reassure you, this is a picture that I would not expect you to come up with on your own. So if this were a homework assignment or a test or something, I would give you this picture. So don't worry about being able to come up with this picture yourself. Okay, we're trying to find the volume of that kind of egg-shaped region that's between those two things. Okay, well, you can look at our integral up here and notice that we're integrating in the z direction first, so we need to know what our upper and lower surface are. Okay, so if you were to take a point on the lower surface, okay, and just go straight up, we're kind of asking what would z be equal to at the top and the bottom, and it's kind of nice in this case. We can see from our labels what z is equal to on the top and the bottom. We're going from one paraboloid um, to the next one, okay? And so our lower surface is just going to be z equals x squared plus y squared, and the upper one's going to be 8 minus x squared minus y squared, okay? So we kind of get those limits without doing too much work from our picture, All right, and we're ready then to find the limits with respect to y and x. And remember again, that's about noticing we're done with the z direction. So we're going to shine a light straight down the z axis and ask, what is the shadow of this region going to look like in the xy plane? And we'll draw the shadow over here. Okay, well, what kind of a shape do you think we're going to get? What would the shadow of this egg be on the xy plane? Notice that the widest part of the shape is right here, this circle, and that's the shadow that we're going to see down in the xy plane.
Okay, and so to figure out what our y limits of integration are, we're going to need to determine what the upper and the lower curve are. Okay, in this picture of the projection that we drew. Okay, well, the thing is, if we want to find those curves, we need to know how big this circle is. What is its radius? We need its equation somehow. And the key is noticing over here, in the picture to the left, that circle comes from the intersection of our two paraboloids. We can figure that out by setting the two surfaces equal to each other. Okay, so I'm going to go down below and find the curve of intersection, that green circle that we just highlighted. Okay, we'll get that by taking the two surfaces and setting them equal to each other. Okay, we can do a little algebra here. So add x squared and y, add the x squared and y squared to the left hand side, and this turns into 2x squared plus 2y squared equals 8. Okay, and then we can divide both sides by 2, and we get x squared plus y squared equals 4. And notice that sure enough, that's a circle. Can you see what its radius is? Okay, the radius is going to have to be 2 because 4 is 2 squared. All right, so what we know now or what those intercepts are. And if you take that circle and break it into its two components, solve for y, you're going to get y equals plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, so in a nutshell, the curve on the top is going to be the positive square root of 4 minus x squared, and the curve on the bottom is going to be the negative square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, so integrating in the y direction, is just going to take us from one to the other. Okay, so our lower curve is going to be the negative square root, and the upper curve is going to be the positive square root. All right, so sorry to be scrolling on you here, but it's hard to get everything on one screen. We have just figured out then what our limits of integration are with respect to y. Let's fill those in. We're going from the negative square root of 4 minus x squared it's going to be a little hard to write all of this. Okay, to the positive square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, we'll rewrite all of this below. This is, I'm having a little bit of difficulty writing this small. Okay. And so we have just integrated in the y direction, and so now we want to shine a light down the y-axis. And because part of our region is below the x-axis, we actually want to shine a light in both directions, from below and above, and ask, what is the shadow on the x-axis? Okay, well, the shadow that we're going to get is just this line here. And you can see kind of from the picture that we're going from negative 2 to 2. Okay, so x equals negative 2 to 2. Those should be our x limits. Okay, and so what we've got up here should be our answer. Let's just rewrite it maybe a little bit more neatly down below. So I'm just going to recopy this entire integral. So the volume equals the integral, negative 2 to 2 negative square root of 4 minus x squared to the positive square root of 4 minus x squared. And then finally, x squared plus y squared. To 8 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, and inside of our integral, we just had dz dy dx. Okay, and there's our answer. They just asked us to set up the integral. And so that integral would give us the volume.